in this video we're going to focus on how to set custom string labels on the y-axis in chart.js all right so this is a question that came from one of our viewers so first of all let's look at this this was in one of my youtube videos about how to shorten long data labels on the y-axis in chart.js so this was a quite good question or this was not a question and in here we had the question from the following from hoodie and hoodie had the following question sir if we were to set custom string labels on the y-axis how would one go about it good question very good question let's start and explore how to do this all right so first of all let's go back here we have this default thing here i'll be honest with you this is not always a quite practical item you would not always want to create a custom custom string label however i had use cases where i have this so i'm going to show you this use case and that might be probably the one that you probably are looking for first let's go to chartjs.org and just a quick note chartjs has 3.4.1 which is quite exciting again a new update and in here we're going to create a default chart first so go in here and then just get, get here to creating the chart i'm going to grab this once i grab this i'm going to paste this in here all right and once I paste this, what I will do more is I want to get the chart.js library. So I'm going to click here on getting started and click on the sub menu of getting started. Grab the chart.js library, which is this one here. Just copy this by clicking on this button and then put it in here. Oh, paste this. All right. Delete, delete. All right. And finally, what I want to do, I want to remove this, but I saw here they have this default setting here. Grab that. Just delete this. All right. You paste that in here. And then we have tap tap or yes uh, indentations and here i will give it a class because i want to have a fix with set by myself and the reason why is because we want to make sure that the chart doesn't scale into infinity so in here i say here chart box as a class and here dot chart box in style and then we just give it a width and we say width 700 pixels save that Go back here refresh all right so we've got this now we're done here what i want to do next all right before you continue on let's say this you want to have a custom label for the y-axis you might say well if i just put it to horizontal problem solved because i can just make it horizontal and then give everything a custom label maybe in your case there's a reason you want to have something like this for example here this is a this is a situation where i had it where i had a dashboard and i want to make sure that i could see immediately which team or which employee hit the target for that month and then it would be with the database connected we're grabbing the numbers and we could see all right this made uh, this team or this sales agent number red sales agent red made so many sales hit the target and this one here and etc etc so we could see it in a matter of seconds and then every month it would it would restart again on zero and so basically here i changed it into target so that's what i'm going to do here i assume something like this you probably want and if not, you can put it in the comment section. Maybe you want to look for something else. Just let me know. However, this is probably the most likely situation in my way I could imagine. Before I do this, I want to make sure we have the structure after documentation. So here, I'm going to put in three blocks. We have here the setup block. And I want to make sure that you really know this. So that's why I'm repeating this quite often. Setup block. We have another block, which will be the config block. And finally, we have here the uh initialization or render block and render basically means to draw so i'm drawing the chart itself all right we're going to grab this here and then first of all here the constant we say here the setup block is a constant of data curly braces semicolon here all right and between here we're going to grab everything from the data but not this one but everything here just below grab this all cut it out there we are Put it in here so i'm going to paste this all right so that's fine so once we have this the next one is the configuration block and the configuration block is all similar config or sorry const const config or constant equals 30 braces parentheses down there make sure you have them all right and then here we're going to grab the three foundation blocks which is or basically the, the skeleton of a chart type data options these three together are essential cut it out paste it in here there we are so once we have this what i want to do is i want to make sure that the data is being connected and basically you could do data equals data but because we have here already the concept of data and this is the same we can just use this 
this is also in charge in JavaScript ex6 this was uh, possible because this is what we call a shorthand for the object literals if I'm not mistaken so so we have this as a nice bonus all right we've got that final the final one is the initialization where you get going to grab this one but we need to make here constant and then we say here my chart why my chart because the ID of the chart here is called of canvas is called my chart being consistent with the naming is easier for yourself to track everything then we say here equal and then here equal we're going to say new and then we say here chart almost exactly what we did here parentheses remember this is not any more purely basic this is different enter enter all right and in here we're going to make this is basically a constructor so in here we're going to grab this part only we don't need this chart just understands it it's it, it created a way to think basically it's intelligent enough to understand that this is related to a canvas and it already makes this automatically once you do this constructor here so that saves a lot of time all right in here config which is the config here grab that and there we are comma here make sure you have that one once we do this, delete all of this, save, refresh. All right, we're done here now. So what I'm going to do now is I want to change the 10 here into a value of target hit. To do this, we need to understand where are we going to adjust this or how. Well, first of all, we're going to work with the x-axis and the y-axis or specifically the scales. And we want to pinpoint based on who these questions was. And that was related to the y-axis so we're going to pinpoint the y-axis to do this we go here and getting started scroll down here to the axis and then we're going to deal with the cartesan axis by default this is a cartesan axis and the bar chart is cartesan axis with a category and the category here is basically the text that we have here so how do we know it's a category well it's basically this here you see the text here that is related to a category so every category has this all right we want to have here these values here. We want these numbers and we want to change the 10 here into a target like commission, uh, target hit, the target achieved, etc. etc. Or the, just the target line. Alright, so how do we do this? Let's go here and then here we are in the category and then we need to go on the ticks. So we have already the scales. We already know the scales. You can see here already one part. We go in options, scales, and we pinpoint the Y scales. So we already have this. This is basically the scale, so the Y scale or the Y axis. So we have this. This is done. What we want to do now is the ticks. So what is the ticks? Scroll down here. Ticks configuration. The ticks are basically here. And this is the ticks, these numbers. Ticks, 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 ticks. And here as well, these are the ticks, which is the text in this case. So all of these are ticks. What we really want to do is we want to first grab the value of the ticks and then after we also need to know the index of the ticks. With those two data points, we can start working on customizing. To do this, we're going here on ticks. As you can see here, this is the namespace. Options, scales, dot. And then scale ID is Y because we want the Y axis. And then ticks. So that's what we're going to do first. So we say here, comma, and then, you, oh, sorry, not even here, comma. If this is on the y-axis, we put in here, comma, and then we say ticks here because we're going to create here basically our object. So if I scroll down here, let's search for ticks. I need to look, look for ticks here, sorry, above. Why? Because in here, options, scales, y, and then dot ticks. Yeah, which is an object. And then, so then once we are here, so now we're in here, we're going to focus on a function, and the function is called that search here it's callbacks it should be somewhere here you can find it I'll just type in callback all right the function is called callback pay attention you always search for this because sometimes it's called with a callbacks with an s in plural version and sometimes it's callback as singular so in our case it's singular so callback without s put in here an s of a callback and then here we're going to say this is the name is function and this function we have two parameters that we are going to use I'm going to make sure that we're going to read this here all right what it really does is it returns a string representation of the tick value as it should be displayed on the chart all right so if you read this I don't know if you understand it most people will not understand it, it doesn't mean anything however once I show you to you you will understand it far better all right here the callback is a value 
and index. And this is the two items that I want to play around with. So we're going to do this. We say here we want the value, comma, index. So what is the difference? Well, I will show it to you, but these are the basic difference. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and up to 20. This is what we call our values. But this is also an array, an array of values, basically. And this is index 0, index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or up to 11 or 10. Sorry, this is 10. I think there's 11 data points, but 0 is the first one. So this is the 10th index, meaning the index here, it goes from 0 up to 10. And this is the value is called whatever the values are in here. All right. So once you have this, let's do a console log just to get a visual representation of what we have. So we're going to say here, oh, sorry, before we do this, curly braces. Everything between here is now a function that we can use JavaScript. All right, so in here, I'm going to say the following. I'll say this, which is that specific item depending on the, the function loop, because it basically loops through, dot, and then we say here, get label with capital L, for value, all right, to grab the value, and then we say index. If I do this and save this, this will disappear, but refresh, we have the console log. And this is what the console log really does, it's the following here. You can see here, one up to 10, all right, so that looks quite nice. This is correct, oh sorry, not even one up to 10, it's zero up to 10, and then it repeats itself. Why, I don't know exactly. Uh, well, there might be here a, other axis because in the y axis you can have two axes you can have the left side and the right side i guess that might be it however we didn't specify the right side so it doesn't matter you can ignore that ignore the duplication of it so this is the most important one 0 to 10 is the index so what happens if i say your value save this refresh you can see here as well duplication right now twice on this side here Remember, 20 was the highest one here. Why? Because this is a value of 19. And it started at 0. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. You can see it's an incremental of 2. of two. So up to 20. Is that correct? Well, let's double check this one more time by comment out this. So you will see it works. Refresh here. All right, now we get these. All right. So now we have this here. So what we want to do here is, for example, we want to just pinpoint a specific label uh, the label or tick here, which is the, this one here. Everything above 10 would be target hit. So what we can do here is the following. You say you return the following. We'll say here, return, uh, what we want to do is an if statement first before you even return, because if we do return right now, you'll see this. Let's say target, target hit, and it should be correctly spelled, save this. Refresh. Oh, unexpected type of return. Of course, it's out of the function. Sorry. It should be here. Return. It's a string, remember? So we say here, target, hit. Save that. Refresh. What happens now is it loops through it. Remember, it's a loop, so it loops through this multiple times. And now everything is targeted, which doesn't make sense. I assume you want to hit, maybe, or you want to adjust maybe one. And if you want to adjust multiple, I will show you as well how to do that. But if we only want to grab, we want to pinpoint a specific one, all we need to do is this. We're going to grab here an if statement. And what we're going to do in this if statement, we'll just say the following. We're going to grab here this magic value here that we have. We say here if value, but I don't want a value, I want to get the index. In this case, I assume the index is. However, you might have also a value, which might be even more practical. And we say equal, equal. And don't use equal strict because you'll get an error because it doesn't see it in that way. Apparently, it's an array. I'm not sure if it's in quotations or not. So, uh, no strict. And I will just show you later on as well why. All right. So, we have this here. And let's say if if the index equals 5. In this case, we know, we assume the index we already know. So, we say index equals to 5. So, that will be the point of 10. If that is the case, we will say target hit. No, did I cut it? All right, I said command cut. All right, to cut it. All right, so then we have target hit. Else, and I don't know how to use a other way to do it without the else. So in this case, so now uh, this will be the only option. All right, we have the return target is this. Then, uh, this is not what I want, sorry. I have to make sure here. Let's put in here a closing. All right, and else, 
is this. All right, so we have this one here. Make sure that this is here. And I'm going to make this a proper indentation here. All right, because this one here closes this. All right, and then, oh, maybe we have something too much. I'll double check later on. And else, if this doesn't work, we turn. What we want to return? Well, basically, we just want to return the value. Nothing else. We don't do anything fancy. All right, so we've got this. This is that. I want to check here. I have a feeling that I have probably too many of these. That's the scale. Then we have the option and then the data. That's the convict. All right, so most likely we have one too many. Fair enough. So you can see that here. So save this. Then refresh. You can see now the moment it hits the fifth or sorry, the sixth in the, or the fifth index, which is the sixth element in the array. It, and it is equal to, well, it's equal to the fifth uh, index. In that moment, it starts to be here, hit target. All right. So this is the way you can do it. Of course, you can also do this value if value would be equal to X amount. Of course, here, you have to really watch out because the moment, if it is not, because let's say here, if this would be 11, you probably will not have anything at all. So you could do here maybe something else. If it is bigger or equal to 10, and then or we can say, or probably uh, and, that's maybe even better. And this is that one, the value should be smaller or equal to 12. Something like this. Watch out with this because you can have an issue here, but I assume you're going to customize yourself specifically. So if I save this, I should expect here this. Oh, okay, you can see here, this is what I mean, that you get an issue here eventually because it hits just 12. Then I say, and lower than 12. All right, so once we have that, that works. All right, so with this, because what happens if the value goes up here, you will get an issue here. So this is really, so you have to be more, you make it really customized, but I assume you're going to pinpoint this. All right, so this is basically what you want to do here. Imagine you have another case here as well, or you could do an else if, basically you could do an else if here as well, where you have another situation, assuming that you have, for example, uh, let's do this, because maybe I assume you said label, so I assume you want to have maybe more customization. So I'm going to do it here, I do this, all right. And then I say here the following. Here I'll say else if. Here's something else. So we could do here another value where you can do almost same. But then here I'm just going to get the else if. I'm going to grab all of this code here to until here. All right, so as you can see, else it starts to make stuff messy. And as for me as well, I notice I have a more harder time to organize it. But let's say here, uh, fire staff. I have no idea. I'm just making up now. So let's assume here that if it is below five, and this is also uh, what we can see here, maybe above three and below five equal to trees for example and below five fire the staff if I refresh here you can see here now well we have a lot of staff to fire I guess in this case yeah and I'm not sure that this is really a good good example but of course I hope you understand here the example of customizing the once your values are going up this can give you an issue because the incremental values start to go up as well. So for example here, um, if I change this instead of this, and let's make this 50, save that, you might get an issue here. All right, so you can see the fired staff doesn't show here anymore, the target hit roll eventually because we have a 10 here, but if this would be a different number, it might impact you. However, this is basically the way to do it, how to customize your Y axis text and maybe pinpoint specifically what uh, the items based on here on value or index where you use values or index you can use the index as well as we did as well we pinpoint specifically 
the item here. So for example, if I change this here, I say this equals to five, then you will see that this will be always consistent. Oh, don't make equal strong. I'll show you why you will see that it doesn't respond or equal strict. Sorry, if you just do equal or double, double equal, it will show here. So target has been hit, everything goes up, etc. etc. So with this, this is basically how you can play around with it, and this should give you the answer you need. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.